Hi there, and welcome to another Sonic Academy tutorial with me, Phil Johnston, and Chris Agnelli. Hey. Or Agnew, is it Agnew or Agnelli? Agnelli, thank Agn you. Agn Agn Agnelli? I spent 10 years protecting my secret identity, and you've just <laughs> revealed it to the world. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Chris is with us today, and he's going to be taking us through uh, the remix of John O'Callaghan, Big Sky. And he's got his Logic project up, and we're going to be going into the details and having a look at how it was all put together. Um, why don't you start off by giving us a bit of background on how the remix came about? Uh, we we were kind of prolific uh, in early 2000s. Uh, we, we had a track called Holding no On To Nothing, uh, which featured Audrey Gallagher. And Audrey sang on John's track. And I think John had heard this track and you know was a huge fan of it. Uh, we met John probably about 2004, 2005, as a young kid. And he and a group of friends were quite prolific on Matt Hardwick's... It's crazy to think that's nearly 10 years ago. Yeah, that's, it is frightening that uh, it's 10 years ago. It's just, it, does, it seems like yesterday. Uh, so they were quite prolific on Matt Hardwick's forums and we got, you know, chatting to them and posting. They were sending us tracks. Uh, him, a guy called Alad Mann and Dewey from Wales. And the first time I met him was at a festival, which is still going, called Wakestock. And John was backstage, and we started chatting. Uh, long story short, we he'd released a few tracks that we were hammering, we were really playing and supporting him big time. And he, we got him onto our DJ agency at the time, Fresh DJ Management, and he had written this track with an Audrey sang on it, and it was very much around the time uh, we were listening to Gabriel and Dress, and he was coming up to my gaff, and, and we were you know trying to do stuff in the studio for a potential album I was looking at doing. And the original, if we flick here, the original, which you probably may not be too familiar with, uh, is very deep and very slow and chuggy, you know? Yeah. Uh, so Wait, A lot more laid back. and Yeah, so we'll flick on to the... Is it slower as well? It, I th I th I presume it is, yeah. Of course, we did ours at 140. So that that's the track I got sent through and immediately thought, you know, the vocal is, is, is great. It was very much in the vein of uh, holding on to nothing. And... We'd, we'd been kind of influenced at the time. The original was sort of influenced through Gabby and Dresden. A couple of tracks. You know, this sort of, that's a similar sort of vibe. You know, that's yeah, it's very quite like, sort of smooth yeah, bass I, lines. And myself and Robbie had been playing uh, that sort of sound out and, and been quite successful with it. Uh, so John f called up and said, look, do you fancy doing a remix? I said, yep, yeah, what's the brief? And it was... Do your 140 trance, you know, your worst. Uh, basically, his brief to me was holding on to nothing. We want, you know, that's such a big influence on me. Can you, yeah. you know, do something like that? So, so do you want to play through this and uh, just sort of give give us an idea of maybe r around the break and a bit of the vocal and sort of, um, and yeah. then we'll go into the, maybe the more details. So as you can see, I mean, it's, we have, what, 55 tracks here. Now, uh, 20 of those from 35 <laughs> down to 55 are kind of effects sweeps and drops and and other such things everything in red is drums everything in brown is bass and pads pink is sort of plucks and stabs uh, and then my favorite thing is these sort of dm i'm a massive depeche mode fan and uh i kind of got close to doing something depeche mode-esque on this track so the start of the track, arrangement-wise... Uh, Do you want to give a quick playthrough of the track just so we can hear what we're... Okay.
Sort of pretty cool. Um, so, okay, you're going to take us through then and sort of go into a bit more detail about some of the elements. Do you want to start off with uh, maybe sort of a, a drum and solo the drum group? Yeah, so... Or, or tell us, I mean, there was a bit you were describing there about this DM delay that you were yeah, saying that I sort of was the... I think what we'll, we'll, in this, to round this video off, I think we'll talk mm. sort of about the arrangement and what I, my thoughts behind the arrangement. Uh, if you listen carefully, there is one verse repeated right okay so y that can always be difficult you know you you tend to get a second verse which has a sl you know moves the story of the song on whereas this was one verse uh so i don't tend to notice things like that i mean i i, I sort of i don't necessarily n listen to lyrics quite that much you know I, I i couldn't tell you one lyric of one song because i'm always listening to the backing track but when I'm I'm remixing, I'm obviously listening to this. I mean, I I listen to I listen to the the vocals, but I'm I'm hearing more of the melodies and the sort of treatment and reverb, yeah, and stuff like that. The first thing uh, I think that stuck in my head with the, the remix was introducing the vocal. Uh, I always thought with holding on to nothing, uh, we had we'd introduced the vocal really well and sounded great in the club. There was this tension that built up. Then it dropped, and this almighty vocal came out through the speakers. And it was her, her voice, her sort of ethereal Irishness. You know, there's an mm. Irishness to the voice. So the first thing it did was we had our, you know, standard build up with drums coming in and uh, basses. But we, you have to try and create a sort of tension on the one note. And I think sort of from here. So we're building, we're building, and wanted a clever way to bring it in. And between 69 and 73, we, we do this track edit thing, so we'll just have a listen to that in solo. And that's... It's like a BT, the, yeah, sort of B, B, original B, stutter edit type yeah, stuff. Yeah, with a bit of, you know, we've got a bit of... Uh, Ten years ago, you actually had to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> there's no plug-in. So you can see there, there's, you know, some things are reversed, or some... Bits are chopped up, and we've got a, a low cut going on it, a phaser uh, coming through it, and that's to me that sets the vocal up. Yeah, I mean arrangement wise, I mean it was one thing that I probably didn't do enough of in tracks, but and you know all your tracks sort of have have the thing where you know it it's sort of driving along in the kick, and then instead of sort of just a big sweep up and then crashing into the next bit, you sort of tend to try and bring things right back down. El Nino did the same thing where it's almost down to silence you know you're all you're, you're creating that real tension in a club you know silence in a club's a really powerful thing because you, you know there's a lot of loud noises you know it, it 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 all stems from one night in a club that i can distinctly remember and the track was bbe seven days in one week and course, yeah. it's and we were in a club in belfast probably 1996 probably 95 96 and it was it was blaring all night and bbe he came on and there's a point in that track where there's silence 
and it was the most amazing thing. Like a hair, hair, hair stand and you could up hear and people talking, and everybody stopped and looked. And then there's an almighty orchestra hit, Jin Jin, and it kicks back in. And that moment in a club always stuck with me. And it, it's back to that, you know, having everything rattling along and slamming it down to nothing. It's that dynamics thing we were talking about in the mastering tutorial as well as, you know, the drama is created from highs and lows. And, you know, if you if you just have your track completely mastered and it's just on one level from start to finish, there's none of you can't have any of that drama. You know, if, if even if you have the best riff in the world, if there's no modulation in in your arrangement in terms of levels and sort of emotion and sort of you know dips and troughs then you're not getting absolutely and at the same in films you know there there are big noisy sequences that are you know battles and stuff and then there's the tender moments that are quiet and it's the same as music it's just peaks and troughs and, and ups and downs and and that's that's what you have to tease out of your tracks and and i don't like things that's probably why i was never really into techno and stuff because it was to me it kind of lacked you know those dramatic yeah, moments, you know, uh, doesn't have the same sort of. Well, I mean, I'm sure people would argue it doesn't have the same emotional. No, it's more groove and more sort of. It's a it's a different techno stuff. Does a different thing. Trance was very much about emotion and about beauty and and melody and stuff. And that's, yeah, that's why I could relate to it. So the other thing I did, uh, the other big setup is your first verse and into your core into your chorus, and it's the first chorus, and this is you know the hook of the song. And that I spent a lot of time at. And we'll, we'll dig further into that once we get into looking at the pads here and the pluck and, and what other instrumentation. Do you want to just play through that transition yeah. from the, so is that the first verse to the, first verse the, the chorus? First verse, yes. So. Let me just see if we got... Maybe something solo, do you? So we got... That w- was there any? I mean, I always find in courses. Maybe again, it's it's probably a bad habit. Is yeah, I always feel that I I, I want to for the first course I want to break down into the first chorus as a breakdown to have it more sort of epic. But uh, you know, obviously you're there. You're sort of just. Well, I, I've done quite the opposite. I've, I've first chorus is all instrumentation and lift, and my second chorus is my breakdown. So you'll hear we repeat here the second verse and then into the second chorus. So I had to really this chorus was going back and forth with John O'Callaghan quite a bit to really nail that impact that mm. and I remember I got he, he listened to a sort of rough demo moment you've nailed the chorus that's it the chorus is nailed and it, there's nothing uh, too dramatic going on it, uh, you know there's probably this little sound in the background that filter opens up A bit of a pad that. Not see, there's nothing, but just sort of weird. Yeah, and they're all side chained, and well, we'll go we'll go into more detail once we sort of cover the arrangement, and so then so you're you're dropping down. Then the next section is another verse or or the same verse same again. Same verse again. Is that in? Is that driving or is that dr- yeah, drop down? No, that we have after the course we have this kind of sort of again that sort of cut up shut down, uh, and I introduced this sound this DM delay which is kind of a uh, me randomly playing notes but it just sits in the background. So we have a small sort of break, you know, the the vocal fades out. Yeah, that vocal really helps sort of bring you and and one thing I'm kind of f- famous for <coughs> uh which John was very adamant I had in was this uh tape delay feedback. And the magic number in this tape delay is 54% feedback and it starts feeding back on itself and starts distorting. Yeah. And you get this really nice over listen. Again, this appeared in Holding On To Nothing. And you hear it starting to feed back on itself. And it's just in. And then shut off. Get that that change, you know. So, it's, and you know, I've spent a lot of time. You can see here, 
you know, these these automation things. There's a lot of just sitting, listening, and tweaking the automation. And did you do, did you all do your, you know, I know you had the Mackie control service. Did you do automation using it, or was it all just sort of drawn no, it in? No, it was all drawn it in. Uh, I, I never, I got the Mackie control service. I've, I've, I've never been in love with it. I've used it because I've had to, and I've spent quite a bit of money on it, but... It, it, I don't think it improved my mix and anything. You know, it, I miss I still to this day miss a desk, proper big desk, yeah, proper big desk. So we're into repeat chorus, and I think strangely, it's kind of you know it's similar to the first. You know, it's not nothing too different. So the next thing we do is the the f- chorus two is now the breakdown, and it's. Same as course one, all the pads and all are there, but we just take out all the drums and we introduce this break sub. So you have to just that big growl. I always loved that noise. It was in mm. uh, Amanda Ghost track or something, I think it was, and it's just uh, that's from a Korg Legacy cell. And the, the other, th- I think the other thing to note. Is most of the instrumentation are Logic Zone? There's so ES2 and ES2, EX24s. EX24. EX24s. Uh, so by yeah. this time, you'd got rid of all your JP <laughs> and your Nord and the the amazing Waldorf. Yeah, yeah, all my synths that I loved, and I, I sold it. So you sort of, I, I went through the, a similar transition where I, I'd, you know, went all digital and tried to do everything in the box, and I did it probably a, a, a year or so before you, and, and at that stage, it didn't work because my computer wasn't, you know, you could maybe run one synth and with the parkour and the virus. It just didn't really tie in, and I think by the time you did it, it worked. You had a Mac Pro, and you know you had all that yeah. stuff, and it sort of seemed to seemed to work for you. Yeah, and the, I think the other big thing that when I I did it, Logic Seven at the time had started coming with all the stuff, all included. the synths. So I mean, out, straight out of the box, you had your synths, your bass synth, you had you know even distortion and stuff, and that that created my sound for a couple of years because it was. And do you miss? Hardware synths at all? I actually, don't. And I don't. I, I, <coughs> I love soft. I love the soft sense. I don't. Yep. You know, when people talk to me about, oh, have you got this soft sense and this soft sense? You know, I don't. I'm not mad into yeah the, having the latest you, and greatest. You need a something with a decent super saw on your yeah, golden. I, I've got. I I always find Logic's plugins did me, and I I could always work them and get something out of them. So I never looked elsewhere. Uh, whereas I think with if you have Ableton or Cubase, you needed to buy. Extra stuff and that's yeah. Cubase was a nightmare back in back in the day because it didn't come with anything at all. Uh, so yeah, we have our breakdown here, and I'll, I'll play it quickly through. Uh, you know, it's, it's standard. We start to lend vocals out, and we start, you know, opening pads up and stuff. You know, it's a very standard fare. We'll go through it in more detail. These sort of hamp, these sort of noises. I love that. Mm. You know, it's it's kind of random. Quite epic. It, it sort of reminds me yeah. of Blade Runner or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, again, that's just an AS2 with probably with the distortion on it turned up. Yeah, distortion up. Nothing too mad. Uh, and then we have uh, again the snare roll. That goes back to BT days, you know, where it's filter opening up and a, a phaser on it just to give it a bit of movement, give it something else. Pads opening up, plucks opening up, delays fading back, and then all this sort of effects. Doesn't sound like there's the same sort of level of side chaining and stuff you would have no. got get nowadays, you know? No, the, 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 I suppose, you know, I'm. I'm not anti side chain, and I'm not a huge fan of it. I can, I find it can hurt my ears and stuff. I like things to feel a bit more natural. I'm not mm. huge over compressor. I don't slam compressors and really turn things up. I like yeah. tracks to. And you're always quite light in in the bass. You're always sort of. I I was I'm terrified of bass. I was I remember probably in the early days I did a couple of mixes that were so bassy it was just a mess and mm. ever since then I've been very frightened of bass and. It's uh, easy. It's easy if you're a DJ to. Turn the bass up a wee bit. Yeah, it's a it, lot harder to get, get rid, rid of, of it. it. Yeah, yeah, but it always it, it it always made my mixes sound a bit light, you know. And never yeah. uh, loads of my mixes have never really been truly happy with, you know. And I think I still to this day I still work on. I think I can get detail in mixes. I think I can get nice separation, but just that overall 
sweetness. The, I, I, I lack the warmth you know, a wee bit. Uh, so I think, Phil, you know, we'll, we've had a quick look at the arrangement. I think in the next video we'll look at, uh, we'll start stripping back the drums and going through the, the key elements in the drums. Cool.